So custom GPTs are finally here in chat GPT. But what is a custom GPT? In this video, we're gonna take you through the steps to create a custom GPT and explain how these can be used. Now say for example, I'm the owner of a business and I want to create a custom chat GPT model that will use data based on my services and products when asked questions by my customers. That's the kind of thing that we can use a custom GPT to do. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you do want to build your own custom GPTs, you will need a chat GPT plus subscription. Let's head into the video and find out more about custom GPTs. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a custom GPT. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have ChatGPT4 enabled in the top left here. And then over on the left hand side, there is an explore option. Once I click into that, I can go ahead and straight away create a custom GPT. But you will see down here, there's a number of custom GPTs that have been pre-created by OpenAI. So if you are stuck for ideas, have a look for those for some suggestions. But let's click create a GPT. Now this takes me into the GPT builder screen. On the left hand side, I have the message window where I can add my instructions to create the GPT. And on the right hand side, I can start to see how that's going to take shape as I go through the process of building it. But the first thing we need is we need a scenario. We need an example to use here. So the one I'm going to use in this situation is let's say I'm a local skateboard shop owner. Now, what I want to do is build a GPT that helps my customers obtain advice about skateboarding as a hobby. Maybe they're a beginner just trying to find out some basic information on the right kind of skateboard and equipment to buy. Or maybe there's somebody a little bit more advanced who is trying to find out more details on how to perform tricks. Now, the thing is, if people ask about the best kind of skateboard to buy, I do want to direct them to my stock. So one of the things I'm going to do as part of this process is give the GPT some custom information to work with, some custom data. And one of those data items will be my current skateboard stock list with all the prices for the stock that I have available. So GPT Builder is asking us what we would like to make. So let's tell it. But let's keep it basic first of all, and then we can go through and add more detail as we need. So I am a skateboard shop owner looking to create a GPT for my customers that provides advice on skateboards and equipment. So some really basic information to begin with. We do need to expand that. We do need to be more specific to make sure that this GPT works exactly the way we want it. But the first thing it's going to do is it's going to update with that basic information. And now it's going to suggest a name for the GPT. Skateboard Advisor, I don't know about you. I don't think that's very original. So I'm going to ask that to be changed to skateboard guru let's call this and again i can keep my responses to some of these questions relatively brief now what the gpt builder will automatically do at this stage is use ai again to create a profile picture for this custom gpt so sometimes it gets these absolutely spot on other times, okay, that's not too bad, but I guess we are a skateboard guru and not a skateboard guru. So I'm going to ask for a change to be made there and change it to a wise man on a skateboard. Let's see what it comes up with now. So again, it's just going through and using Dali to update the image. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the GPT builder can sometimes be a little bit slow depending on how many people are using ChatGPT at the time. 
Um, so we've got a new image there. Let's stick with that. That's fine. Okay, so what the GPT Builder is going to do at this stage is it's going to ask for some more information. Now it's asking me what it needs to focus on. This is where we need to start being much more specific. So obviously there is a huge amount of information already in the chat GPT model that it can draw on to answer these questions. However, as a skateboard shop owner, what I might want to do is provide very specific information and advice. Some of that advice might be different to what's available on the web. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this GPT some additional data, some additional information around skateboarding to work with. And I want it to use that as a starting point for its information source. So we've got the ability to attach files containing data and we can ask the GPT to draw on that data as a first information source itself. So if I click on the paperclip icon, I've downloaded a couple of guides from the web that I found already. So these are detailed guides on skateboarding and I'm going to upload those to the GPT and tell the GPT what to do with those files. So use these files as a starting point for your answers. But if you can't find the information asked here, use the web. What happens at this stage is the GPT builder will then go ahead and update its knowledge base with that data. Excellent. So that's the behavior updated. And it's confirming that it's going to use those files as a primary reference point and then web resources only when needed. So you can see on the right hand side, the preview window is now starting to populate. Um, it does come up with some suggested questions for the user. But there is one more piece of data I want to provide the custom GPT at this stage. Now, as a skateboard shop owner, I obviously sell skateboards and skateboarding equipment. So what I've done here is I've created a very basic Excel spreadsheet that has some details around the skateboards I currently have in stock and some of the information relating to each skateboard. So the deck size, the truck brand, and the price of the skateboard. Now, one of the things I have noticed with building custom GPTs and using files in ChatGPT is that you have to be very specific sometimes about the information you're providing, what that information means, and how you want it to use that information. So you can see here in column B, where I've got the deck size, eight inch, 8.3 inch, so on. I've only said size, it doesn't say the size of what. So I will update that column heading with deck size to be absolutely clear what that information means. Now let's save that spreadsheet, let's close it, and let's upload that to the GPT. And let's give it some really specific instructions here. So use the attached file to make recommendations on which skateboard to buy if asked. Provide the skateboard brand, deck size and price. So again, the GPT builder will update. And it's now asking me whether I would like to test the 
skateboard guru. So let's go ahead and ask it a really basic question just to make sure that that price list is being used by the custom GPT. So I can see here one of the questions that has been automatically generated is can you recommend a skateboard within my budget? So let's use that question just to make sure it's using that data file that I've provided for the response. Okay, so it's been quite intuitive here. It is asking for some more information about my needs. Now, I have a suspicion here just from some of the questions it's asking that it's not going to use my file in this example. Let me just respond to that here. I'm just going to say basically my budget is £80. I do know that I have skateboards for £80 in that price list. Okay, so I can see it is searching its own knowledge. Yeah, okay, so it's providing a really generic response here. So this means we need to go back to the GPT builder and be much more specific with it. We need to make sure that it only makes recommendations from the price list. So we need to make sure it comes back with a very specific suggestion based on that spreadsheet. So let's go back to the GPT builder and see if we can refine this a little bit to make sure it provides the detail that we're looking for. Okay, so I have realized what the issue is here. If we go to configure, I can see here that code interpreter isn't being used. So ChatGPT relies on the code interpreter to do what we call advanced data analysis. And whenever we upload data such as a spreadsheet, we do need to make sure that that option's enabled so it can use its data analysis capabilities to read and understand spreadsheets and other document types that we upload. So I'm going to go ahead and select code interpreter. And can you recommend a skateboard with an eight inch deck? So let's see what it does now. Now, if this is working correctly, Ah, okay, so that looks good. So I can see now it is analyzing something. And if I click on the drop down menu, yes, I can see that it is analyzing the spreadsheet I uploaded with my price list. Excellent. So it seems now to be pulling back data from my spreadsheet. And if we just go into the spreadsheet, let's just make sure that that information is correct. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We appear to have nine skateboards that have an eight inch deck size. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so it seems to be pulling all of those recommended skateboard back properly. So with the custom GPTs, you do have to be very specific on occasions. You have to make sure that you have all the right options enabled whenever creating your GPT, just to make sure that you're given the specific answers required. So what I was keen to show you is also what the configure tab looks like that sits behind all of this. Now, this is pre-populated from the outset. So as soon as you start creating your custom GPT through the Chappie GPT builder, the fields here will be automatically populated as you go through. So if you need to make any tweaks to the GPT itself, you can either do that through the Chat GPT builder window, or you can come in here and make some tweaks direct in the configure screen. Um, if we just go through, you can see that I've got an option here to amend the conversation starters that are automatically generated. I can remove any of these or even come up with ones of my own. If I wish to use additional files as a basis for the knowledge that the GPT uses, I can use the upload option here to add those files as well. 
Now, one of the things you will notice is down here we've got this actions option and I can go ahead and create a new action. So what is this? Well, this is really, really quite powerful. This will provide the capability to integrate your custom GPT with data from an external source via an API. Now, I'm not going to go into that today, but I will be doing further videos where we look at that in a lot more detail and show you how to use it. But it's a powerful tool and definitely something to be aware of. So there's one final thing I need to do here, and that's make sure I save my GPT. So if I select only me, I do have other options available to me here. I can share this GPT to anyone who has the link that I generate, or I can make this public. Now, the ChatGPT store, where people can publish their own custom GPTs is available in January of next year. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna click on confirm there. And that is my skateboard guru custom GPT saved. If I want to make further edits to that, I can click on the skateboard guru drop down here and go to edit GPT and make further changes to the GPT. I can revert to the previous version, or if I want to delete the GPT altogether, I have the option to do that too. So this looks like a really great tool for a variety of use cases and situations. My advice is have a play around with it, but do test what you're doing as you go along. Like I say, you have to be very specific with the custom GPT, to make sure it's using the exact information you need it to and it's providing the responses or the types of responses that you would expect i hope you've enjoyed the video guys if you have liked this do give it a thumbs up click subscribe for more videos in relation to ai and chat gpt and we'll see you again soon